Hey, it's producer Eric. I wanted to let you know about some supplemental content we have coming your way at the end of this week. If you're a Rooster Teeth First member on the 21st, you'll get the commercials draft. We are drafting ads from our childhood. If you're not a first member, you can wait until the 22nd, which will be Saturday, and that'll be free for everyone. But that's not all, because on the 28th for Rooster Teeth First members, we will have the state draft. We're drafting states. If you're not a Rooster Teeth First member, you can get it for free on the 29th. So that's the commercials draft this week, the state draft next week. But right now, it's another episode of the Face Podcast. Enjoy. Okay, this is episode 163. Uh, Up to you where you guys want to take it, but last time talking about just to recap uh the dallas trip movie plots tomato the worst soup smeg uh kitchen tables or i guess coffee tables equidistant birthplaces andrew's thumbstick journey and a thumb cam so excited to find out what happens. don't forget about nick nameless oh yeah nick nameless that's right nick nameless is the first thing i wrote i missed it sorry hello and welcome to episode one i didn't like that are you serious you weren't recording now i'm recording okay that's okay i didn't like that anyway hold on i gotta burp is it a sprite burp? Ooh. Yep. How'd you know? The name of your file was been enjoy- been enjoying Sprite lately or something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've been really enjoying it. I've been really really liking Sprite again. Been drinking yeah, a lot weird. of Sprite. Yeah. Whew. I lost that burp. You ever have that where a burp just goes away and you f- it's a fucking Oh, it's the worst. It's, it's a the worst sad feeling. feeling. It's terrible. Like, Do you want me to come yeah. and pat your back? I wish you could. <laughs> it'd, take you, it'd take way too long for you to get over here. You do that, and I'll interpret the pat from here, and I will I'll <sighs> mimic it. All right. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go with this burp in limbo. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the <laughs> Face Podcast. My name is Jeff Ramsey. With me, as always, other people. This is episode 163. <laughs> Let's get to it. I'm other people. <laughs> I feel like you're putting a lot of effort into the name of the podcast and you're like going really high pitched it's bleep though so nobody really benefits i do that why that's why i do it oh, oh. <laughs> yeah that's exactly like, why i do it now that was funny so that's just for us yeah it's just for it's just for it's honestly it's just for me like oh. it's, it's funny to me knowing <laughs> that that's gonna get bleeped and no one will ever hear it <laughs> and that's where i put the most effort <laughs> and that's kind of point of this whole thing yeah <laughs> i try to oh, stay true to my roots oh, yeah <laughs> We didn't. We didn't really talk about it. Uh, there's a, a quiet f- face that happened over several episodes of the show relating to what I got you for your birthday, Jeff. I was going to mention that, dude. I love my birthday present from you. By oh, the what'd way. you get? Thank you so much. I got Jeff. They do uh, the Florida Keys. They they do. You know, I talked about the the Conk Republic, their own like nation that they made. Yeah, that would have been a fun state. That would have been a great thing to draft. The Conk Republic. Um, back to back state talk. Uh, they do a thing where you could get a passport for that region. And then you can also get like a little coupon book so you can go to like different places and they'll stamp it for you. And you can go, go, go around and you could get whatever you wanted on it. We were big in the nickname talk at around the time that this happened. It just started. Jeff was very excited about T-Bone. So I got Jeff a T-Bone Conk Republic passport that they send and like verify. I haven't seen what it looks like, but I'm assuming it looked good. It came out the way yeah, I'm taking pictures of it right now. It's fucking gorgeous, dude. Well, so I did that because Jeff was very excited about T-Bone. And then we took a two week break. And when we came back from the break, Jeff introduced himself as Porterhouse on the next podcast. <laughs> and I was terrified that T-Bone was already dead because it takes six to eight weeks for them to mail this thing out. <laughs> So I bought it ahead of time. It was all locked in. And he was like, Ned, this week I'm Porterhouse. And I thought he was just going to keep changing nicknames. So quietly, if you go and listen to that with context, internally, I'm going, oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. He's changed his nickname. T-Bone is gone. T-Bone is dead. But I think externally, you were for some reason just screaming (laughs) T-Pain. But he kept it. T-Bone alive and well. And I'm trying to find this... uh... I don't like I don't like Discord. What do you mean? I just don't yeah, like trying to figure either. out where to post an image. Yeah, it sucks. Yeah. Is that your problem? You gotta hit yeah. the plus sign. Little plus in the bottom left. No, I know, but it's it's won't it won't let me add you know how you have to do that thing where you add you have to add it's like it doesn't have all your images. Oh yeah, it like, comes in like add blank. More? 
But the oh. add more options gone all of a sudden. Okay, there we go. I can do it this way. As somebody who uses the browser, I don't I don't think I've experienced that. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, it is Con there Republic. You Con Republic. Fancy little Party thing. passport. <laughs> Party passport. How, how gorgeous is that? Beautiful. Hope to Beautiful use it passport. someday. Oh, man, speaking of uh, Key West, it's about to be July 4th weekend. That's uh, oh. That's probably some pretty good just, I mean, by the time this comes out, I'll be way past that, but... Just FYI, that's probably some pretty good uh, people watching right there. I didn't I even imagine. think about that. July 4th yeah. weekend is probably Hard like slopping. insane down yeah. there, right? <laughs> I imagine it's going to be it's going to be slop o'clock all o'clock. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say like an interstellar when they go to that different planet and an hour is like six years. July 4th weekend <laughs> slop o'clock is just it never it's the entire weekend. It's all slop o'clock. <laughs> you come back from Key West and all your kids are older than you. <laughs> <laughs> it's a slop o'clock experience uh before we started this we were talking about basketball and i yeah. wanted to to share something with gavin you and eric jeff might uh be familiar with well you're definitely familiar with it to an extent don't don't reveal any information gavin there's a player that was drafted recently and a post photo of him in the discord and his name is grady dick which is a great <laughs> oh yeah fantastic name yeah. First of all, second thing, just kind of unrelated to my broader point. Who do you think he looks like when you look at Grady Dick? Is there anything that jumps out at you as like, oh, he's this? Uh, no, because I have one. It's very distinctive. Whenever I see Grady Dick, I cannot see anything else but the Hamburglar. He looks like the <laughs> Hamburglar oh before God. he started oh, his no. life of crime. Like if they were going to do like a live action biopic of the Hamburglar, <laughs> young Grady Dick is Hamburglar which before part? the crime started. Which part? Which part? What, all, just his face. His face, yeah. his, his vibe, face? His, his aura. You don't, his hair. You don't see Grady Dick and think Hamburglar. You don't think those two photos are the same guy? I it's the same guy just grown up with a life of crime. This is in 20 years. <laughs> this is it's like two branching paths, of, you know. Yeah. If he misses like one too many free throws, we know exactly. If Grady Dick was 5'8, he would be the hammer. <laughs> Dude, I got to I got to admit he looks shockingly similar to the Hamburglar. That was a morning thought I had. I woke up and thought, Grady Tick looks like the Hamburglar. That was, that was the start to my day. Um, That's like saying Ian McKellen looks like Falcor. I mean, well, I just, there's, there's not enough. <laughs> what are you talking about? Never, hey, I, that might never considered bad. that. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait, Let's see. Does can Ian, I see Falcor? I don't yeah, know what I'm, Falcor I'm, looks I'm going to get it for you here in just a second. <laughs> okay. Does Ian Let's McKellen. Let's see a comparison of Ian McKellen to Falcor. This is. Look uh, like Falcor. Okay, here. Classic Falcor. <laughs> okay. Not bad. Okay. I kind of have a nose like Falcor. Hang on. Gavin, you might be right. Oh, There's man. no one <laughs> in the <laughs> eyes. <laughs> That's a great one, Gavin. You nailed it. Yeah. Did That's you know shocking. that he looked like Falcor? Had you thought that before? <laughs> I just picked two red. <laughs> you could do an Animorphs cover of Ian McKellen to Falcor, and it would make sense. Oh, dude. Like you could see look at it the entire one. way. Oh, I'm so bummed that that is so similar. Same also, nose. Are oh. you saying, Gavin, that there's not enough of of the Hamburglar to identify or compare him to a person? Is that what you're trying to argue? I'm saying that Grady's dick doesn't look anything like the Hamburglar. <laughs> you don't think they look the same? No. Oh, okay. That's crazy to me. I think they're identical. Grady's dick. <laughs> Grady's dick. It's a spinoff we didn't know we wanted, but it's here. So my question to you, Gavin, is I learned he, his name, and then I thought, what do they do about the jersey situation? Because it's you put your last name on the jersey. Do you think that it just will say dick, or will they try to do like a G dot dick? Like, will they try to style the I dick? I think it'll in just any say way? dick. Yeah. Why wouldn't they do? I mean. I mean, it's his yeah, name. Why wouldn't because it oh. says Dick? What do you name. think, Gavin? I think just Dick. It's not. You think just Dick? <laughs> I thought they're gonna do G dot Dick to like kind of because you don't. Know, it's, it's not like, like Grady shit. It's not like Dick is That's a common name. The... It's gotta yeah. The, he, he can't be the first Dick in basketball. Yeah, definitely not. There's dicks all over the place in basketball. I assume. 
Well, historically, for yeah. sure. So Eric showed that. Kansas dick. That, that makes sense. Kansas dick. That makes sense. I was expecting a G dot dick. What Toronto delivered on is better than I could have ever dreamed. He's the number one dick. <laughs> oh, He's dick one. No. He's dick one. I thought That's, they were going to try to cover it a little bit. He's just number one dick. They picked the most phallic number. <laughs> that is... That they picked the most dick number. Yeah, they, they picked, that is a swinging dick and dick. ball. That, that is a side profile of a pair of balls and a long dick. If the back of the jersey was sponsored by Mastercard, <laughs> it'd be a real picture. Oh, yeah. What if it they is... did like an eight? <laughs> they had it below it, and the one was coming out of the. He's eighteen. <laughs> they put the one sideways. Yeah. They, yeah. <laughs> Oh, the letters coming out? That'd be great. <laughs> it's perfect. You guys are so he's children. the number one dick. And he's the hamburglar. But you didn't see the hamburglar thing, which is crazy to me. I think most people will hey, feel I, I didn't see it. I have a question for you, Gavin, on the yeah. subject of the hamburglar. McDonald's is, uh, is fa fairly popular in the UK, right? Yeah. And so they have tons of McDonald's. Do kids have, like, birthday parties and stuff at McDonald's there? Yeah, I, I did as a kid. Had one. So are all of the cast of <laughs> characters on the roster over there like the hamburglar and grimace and mayor mccheese and all those people or do they or do you just like or do you get different characters no i think we just had like a a ronald situation i i think they are they would they did like pop up but i didn't know them by name i okay. feel like i've heard english people reference the hamburglar and things but i don't I, until i've seen this picture andrew posted i don't think i even knew what he looked like okay really yeah well next time you see grady dick you're ever uh <laughs> Somewhere in ESPN is on. Number one day. him. What, what were you talking about last episode, by the way? You said the, the Titanic was a f face. Oh, just the whole event of it happening. That wasn't intended. That was a real mistake. The whole crashing oh. of the Titanic. <laughs> the whole hitting the iceberg on your first voyage. So is that going back to your, like, things that could, like, turn right? Problem solved? That would be one, yeah. <laughs> I just more meant, like, it seemed kind of avoidable, but I don't know a lot about the Titanic and why they hit the iceberg and Dude, well, I think the they, competence it, and all it that. It went wrong because they turned, right? Like, if they'd just gone f straight into it nose first, oh, it probably like, wouldn't have sank. Or they could have turned way earlier. <laughs> yeah, or, or not gone full speed. <laughs> huh. Was anybody else surprised by how close to land the Titanic was when it crashed? I thought it was way further out. I mean, it's still it hundreds of miles out. Yeah, but I mean, on the map, it's like it's right there next to the the <laughs> oh, looks face closer. center of the universe. Yeah, that's right off the coast. I feel like I get burger confidence when I look at maps and like distance, not understanding how far something actually is. It always feels closer than it is. The guy that promised uh, four marathons. Yeah, that was that was peak burger confidence. That was an insane. <laughs> First of all, it was three. Oh, sorry. Second of all, that was a mistake. That was just a dumb statement to claim. That was, I've matured since then. Yeah. I've grown perspective. And what has that perspective given you? What has it taught you? Uh, that I can't run three marathons or walk wow. three marathons. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Without training? Well, not, no, with, no not with that attitude. No way. With training? Yeah. No training? No. Impossible. What do you mean training, though? Like, like having like a trainer or just like practicing walking? Uh, like like practicing long distance walking. Yeah, building stamina and endurance and yeah. stuff. Yeah, how far could you go now, do you think? I have no idea. Before you're like, oh, this sucks, I'm going home. <laughs> oh, but before I say this sucks, I'm going home? Two yeah. blocks. <laughs> on two blocks, this sucks. <laughs> two blocks. And how many blocks in a marathon? Uh, it's a hmm. thousand. <laughs> how long are the blocks? <sighs> They're one mile each. <laughs> uh, this is just a math problem. I feel like I'm... <laughs> Jimmy has 16 apples and is going 52 miles west. How many apples does he have? How Those many city questions. blocks in a marathon? 524.375. Ooh, so you're like half a percent in? I don't think there's any city I want to walk that much blockage for. Mm. I don't think there's enough stuff for that many city blocks to be in. You don't think New York City has that? I mean, New York City's fucking packed. Yeah, you're walking. Or Tokyo? There. No, I'm not saying... That there isn't enough space in a city for that. I'm saying for my interest, I wouldn't personally be like, by block 200, I'd feel like I probably have seen most of the things uh, that I'd want to see. I'd run hmm. out of interesting things to look at. I really appreciate your perspective and um, what you're saying here. This is, I think this is a growth moment for you. I think that's great. 
They don't want to get too far away from ankle integrity. Jeff, what percent would you say your ankles are at? <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> oh, no. No! My, my left ankle is... Uh, uh, hold on, let me readjust. Uh, I think it's at like 54% right now. What happened? The gentle ghost made a reappearance oh, no. <laughs> uh, and was not. He's he's aggressive. He's an aggressive ghost now. Um, this had nothing to do with bicycles. I was you need walking. To get to connect. Emily and I were walking. Uh, we were walking a very boring block around the neighborhood with nothing to look at. Uh, it was it was a block like two fifteen for us. And uh, now we were we were just walking around the neighborhood, and I had like a, a sprite in my hand. And I went to, it was empty and I went to throw it in a trash can, like one of my neighbor's trash cans on the street. And I just looked at it and the trash can lid was up and I just like moved the Sprite in that direction. And the ghost slammed into me and just, <laughs> I fell forward and to the left and twisted my ankle like a high oh. sprain, like a late, oh. late in his career LeBron <laughs> sprain. And it hurt so bad that I was like, I was like, a, I was like a, like less, I was a second away from my bone going out of my ankle. I don't know what the fuck happened. It was oh. such force that I like, I yelped, and then I stood up, and Emily looked at me, and she was like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" And then I had to have her help me home. Like I had to put all my weight on oh her, my God. like a crutch, and have her help drag me home. And it was like a, three quarters of a block. It took like fifteen minutes, and I couldn't walk for the rest of the day. It was the craziest thing. And I, there was no hole in the ground. There was no, I didn't step off the curb. It, I was just on a flat sidewalk and my ankle just collapsed on itself for no reason. And it <laughs> sprained so goddamn bad. I'm so sorry. For nothing. For a Sprite. Trying to get rid of for it. For just getting rid of it. It was empty. It wasn't even, I didn't even have the extra Sprite weight. It was gone. I think if you're going to fall with a beverage in your hand, like a, a popular soda, I think Sprite is the funniest. <laughs> Why? It's just something about I was holding a Sprite and then I fell is a lot funnier than I was holding a Coke and I fell or I, I was holding a Pepsi. And I, there's something about Sprite. Sprite I, is a funny word. What about Dr. Pepper? <laughs> That's funny. What's the worst thing that happened? It's a doctor. Are you happy? Somebody finally made your reference back to you <laughs> after all these years. <laughs> uh, I think it, I, this is maybe a little local, but I think it would be embarrassing to fall with a big red. Because it's got the name Big Red, but then also, if you spill anything, you're just covered in red fucking, in, in like red soda. Yeah. I would hate well, to follow right. that. Big Red is really funny, too. That's a great one. I have a, I have a science question um, for you guys. I'm not very science-minded, but I had a thought the other day that I'm, I'd like to run by you. I'm curious if this would work. Have you guys had, like, boba tea? Mm -hmm. Oh, with the little balls. The bubbles. Yeah. yeah, you get the little balls in them. Have you Do not tried like that, Gavin? Yeah, it's absolutely foul. Worst yeah. texture in liquid of all time. Oh, you don't like it? No, hate you don't it. like the little, little little flavor. Disgusting things. Wow, you hate it too, Jeff? Can't stand it. Wow. Okay. Uh, me, me, and Nick are all on board for this, so you can uh, keep it going. Okay. No, Nick. Nick likes a food. Wow. This actually, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, get him, get him, get him. <laughs> 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 Jeff and Gavin might actually be the perfect people to run this scenario by in my head. So I was thinking, uh, I, I had, <laughs> which is dangerous, I had a drink that like contained kind of similar product to it, and uh, I noticed that the ball went through my system and made it intact. <laughs> Come on. And it still worked. <laughs> like it was still intact. So it still I thought worked? this is. Well, I mean, like it was still poppable, I guess. Like it didn't, oh it didn't break down. God. Oh God. So I had a thought of, let's say you had like two liters of boba <laughs> balls, right? And you drank all of them. And then you got someone like, uh, uh, this is just the first guy I think of with like strong legs. You got like Mirko Krokop, who was like known for kicking really hard. If you drank a bunch of boba balls... And then Mirko Krokop kicked you in the stomach. Could it pop the balls and you taste the flavor? Can you get the flavor of the balls through Why your stomach? Why do you think you'd be able to taste with your stomach? Because there, there are taste receptors all throughout your gut. I mean, we, taste, we tasted with our feet. That worked. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. I mean, you can look that up. I'm not a science man. I'm just, it's a thought I had of how funny it would be to like, I don't know, get kicked really hard or maybe like, 
you hit your steering wheel in a car accident and you taste like f- flavor. You get orange. You get orange taste. That, oh, here we go. Eric said, uh, you want to read that, Gavin? I think Eric should read that. <laughs> Endocrine cells, orange comet shaped cells in the gut villi have functional sweet and bitter taste receptors. Not shown. This, there's an image here. Uh, at their apic. Ac- Apical, damn it, this is where I lost it. Apical, <laughs> apical luminal Apisal membranes. Apical luminal sugars. membranes. Here we go. Sugars, see, Jeff should have read it. Sugars and other nutrients within the gut lumen activate the gut taste receptors, leading to release of endocrine cell hormones. So, the same t- taste receptors lining the tongue and palate also occur in the stomach, intestines, and other internal organs. Enteroendocrine. You know what you could do if you were a, if you were I, I, a I think it would work, but B, you know what I think you could you could ha- there's a different use for that if you were a spy, right? Okay. You know how like back in the fifties and the sixties, spies would have like uh, they would have a false tooth that would have a uh, yeah like cyanide. A poison cyanide mm-hmm. pill in it, right? What if you as a spy? Uh, you just started ingesting spy filled <laughs> boba tea all the time. <laughs> And then nothing happens to you. You just shit it out. You're fine. No problem. But on the day you get captured, if they catch you unaware, if, as long as you've got those boba balls in you, if things are looking grim, you can instigate a fight with your captor or whatever. <laughs> or as soon as they try to torture you and they punch you really hard in the stomach, they kill you. Oh, you're there's... dead. Mission accomplished. And they don't get the secrets. That's a genius idea, Jeff. I was thinking more of a game show. Like it, uh, maybe like a millionaire, but instead of trivia, you need to accurately describe the flavor that's inside of you. And like somebody would kick you really hard. And if you're accurate, if you're like, hmm, that's that's honeydew is what I had. Yeah. Then you go on to the next round. It's called kick taste. It's a great it's kick a, taste. It's yeah. a great new. Do you see, that's what you know how like uh, WWE has their own uh, platform and their own app and their own yeah. programming, mm-hmm. their own OTT or VOD. Uh, there should be something for UFC like that. Like they've already tried to expand with that really bizarre <laughs> slap fighting. Yeah, that's a uh, show which I could not get behind or get into. It's terrible. But what if they start to do stuff like this? They start to have like UFC game shows, like Taste the Kick and, uh, and <laughs> like things it. like that. Yeah, that could be it. Could be a whole new avenue for their for. Like, it would be like their XFL. Yeah, like they're that's great. They must register different flavors though, because if my gut ever comes back into my mouth, it tastes awful, and I feel like I'm not constantly tasting vomit. Gus always hmm. talks about that one time that he got po- he got uh, food poisoning after eating Rudy's barbecue, and then the next day he threw up Rudy's barbecue, and he said it was the best tasting vomit of his life. <laughs> yeah, and he like shit a bean Ooh. out of his nose. Yeah, and he said it was like it was it was confusing to him because it tasted good. I've done the peak. same. Oh, I actually really? threw up. I threw up Rudy's at your house, Jeff. <laughs> Did Wait, you really recently? This- <laughs> no, I don't know. Probably, <laughs> probably fifteen years ago. Oh, okay. Oh, How in was an it? earlier episode, by the way, I said that um, you stopped playing Fallout in 2007, but it was it was 2009. Oh. I got the trip wrong. You guys really don't like Boba, huh? Nah. Huh. I like the Fett. I mean, how much do you like it? Would you like? <laughs> <laughs> would you like like a Boba steak? Well, how would that work? Yeah, just I have was it on gonna a plate say, with a knife what, and fork? what does that mean? What does that mean? Like a slab of it. But I don't know what that means. Like uh, you swallow the drink and it just is you taste you pop the bubbles you cut into a steak like it immediately the bubble pops. Do you want like a steak full of like Orbeez? Like is that what you're? <laughs> what? Yeah, like what? <laughs> well, what's in the bowl? Uh, I, I don't Flavoring? know. Here, here's the thing. When I think about it too much, I think that they look like little dog eyes. What the? F- and, oh, and I don't like that. Uh, I don't like yeah. it. But that's not what it is. It's just tapioca. But like, okay, what? I thought they were solid. I didn't boba? know they had a, I didn't know they had like a filling. What are you talking? What? what? Boba? Have you had boba? What's Everything in has them? a filling. It's not like it's like a it's, a filled. It's filled like thing. tapioca. It's, it, yeah, it's chewy tapioca. It's just fucking. Yeah, but gross. Like, the whole thing is one thing, right? There's not like an internal piece. I I guess I guess not. I don't know. It's what? not like somebody fills it with something. What is a dog's eyeball made up of? There's probably veins and shit <laughs> in there. <laughs> but there's probably lenses. things inside of a dog's but, eyeball. But what I'm saying is uh, that's what I understand about the whole like getting punched and it releasing the thing. It's it's the thing already. Right. But I think that y- it, if you get punched and they're easily ruptured, I think you'll be tasting more of it 
in a different way. Well, and I think what Andrew was saying as well is maybe you could inject something, a different flavor into the tapioca bowl. Honeydew. Like honeydew yeah. or whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is or, like a mechanism of delivery. Yeah, or whatever a dog's eyeball tastes like. Yeah. I mean, could can be I ask, what does Grady Dick look more like the hamburger or do the boba balls look more like dog's eyes to you, Gavin? What's I say the boba balls look like dog eyes. <laughs> you think they Ridiculous. look like Lil Hobbs' eyes? Uh, they do. I they mean, do. poor Lil Hobbs. Ridiculous. He's got little boba eyes. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> if you if you see that, that that picture of the orange drink, yeah, the bottom right, there's like three, there's like two eyes and a nose below it. It makes a, it makes a little hobs. Uh, it's, a little, it's little hobs in there. <laughs> it's the essence of hobs. <laughs> Poor little hobs, he's inside the drink. <laughs> Get out of there, little buddy. <laughs> hey, I got a question for you guys. Okay, uh, that's kind of related to this. It was my morning. Th- it was my morning thought today. Actually, mm. uh, what a, what a, what happened to silly straws? Like cur- curly whirly straws? Yeah, wasn't yeah. there? Well, that's not what we called them in America, but I love that that's what you called them in the UK. I'm assuming. Uh, wow. I feel like they were everywhere for most of my life and my childhood, and they were always fun. And I just feel like we got away from silly straws. Hard to clean. Maybe we should pivot back to silly straws. Would you enjoy a drink more if you had to suck it through the entire f- face logo? Yes. Uh, yes, I would. Yes, I would. Because I would. Because I think I would. <laughs> I would. <laughs> like I just it, like think... written out like a neon sign <laughs> that would let go through it. That would be so big. I just, I just feel like the world was a happier place. The world was a happier place when people used silly straws. So big. Could you imagine being in like a park and seeing somebody drink with a giant face? I'm just drinking through my favorite podcast. (laughs) (laughs) The straw would contain more liquid than the drink. I wonder if you could. Yeah, I wonder if you if, I, if you had a full gurpler, how much of the gur- <laughs> how much would be in the cup by the time some of it's touching your mouth? Right, like could you empty the cup before you get the before you get any in your mouth? <coughs> Can you imagine how psychotic you would look in a public space with a gurpler and this giant f- face straw? You would oh. have to sell it with like a flushing tool. Oh my god. I tell you what, you'd make an entrance on that scene, yeah. <laughs> I I looked up custom silly straws just to see. <laughs> custom is not super long of a word and doesn't look like a show logo, but look at how many curves and turns are in there. <laughs> oh my god. That is half a bottle in there. Absolutely. <laughs> well, and I think if we do a Gurpler one, we need to have a wider, like a bigger, a lower gauge straw. Yeah, 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 yeah. We need a yeah. we need like a thick straw that would be able to suck up boba. We're gonna have <laughs> oh to add two more God. letters to that. Yeah, that's only six letters custom. And I think that it has to be stacked. It's got it to be stacked. It's yeah, got to yeah, be yeah, like the logo face. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We we should make these because whenever we sell like a <laughs> drinks based receptacle, it always goes really well. All right, let me okay. <laughs> let me throw it into the merch slack. Hang on. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. There are times, especially growing up, where it's just so difficult to decide what direction you want to go in, whether it's career or personal life, and especially like in the context of career, figuring out what ultimately is satisfying to you is is a constant process, and maybe something that is beneficial to you now won't always be. You just, in my experience, have to try stuff and learn from those experiences that you have. And sometimes in life we're faced with tough choices and the path forward isn't always clear. Even when it is clear, it isn't always easy. You know, it's kind of a a great aspect of therapy and being able to talk to someone. Whether you're dealing with decisions around career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. Therapy is a wonderful process to go through. It is something that has greatly impacted my life in in countless beneficial ways. Uh, It's a process I still engage in. It's, uh, in my experience, extremely beneficial. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. 
Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash face today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash face. Take on the sun with gear built to last. Our friends at Shady Rays have you covered for the warm weather ahead with premium polarized shades at an affordable price. Shady Rays is an independent sunglasses company that offers a world-class product that's just as good as any expensive pair we've worn. Durable frames and extremely clear optics for outdoor adventures. And that's not all. Shady Rays offers the most insane protection in all of eyewear. Every pair of sunglasses is backed by lost and broken replacements. If you lose or break your pair, even on day one, they told us they will send you a brand new pair, no questions asked. Wear your Shady Rays with confidence because they have your back long after you purchase. Plus, every purchase supports the Shady Rays Impact Program, which works directly with nonprofits and their communities to empower and make adventure accessible for all walks of life. From childhood cancer patients to young adults with serious health conditions, Shady Rays is making a lasting impact on their lives through sunglasses. If you don't love your Shady Rays, exchange for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. There's no risk when you shop. Their team always has your back. Exclusively for our listeners, Shady Rays is giving out their best deal of the season. Go to ShadyRays.com and use code FACE for 50% off two plus pairs of polarized sunglasses. Try for yourself the shades rated five stars by over 250,000 people. Speaking of merch, I had an idea. I had a, a uniform idea that just, just struck me the other day. I wanted to run by you guys Ooh. okay, and see if this is a, a direction I should go into in terms of invention. I know, Gavin, you're about to get to work on, on your thing. Uh... You ever look at a fork? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Most days, yeah. Yeah. What does a fork look like to you? Uh, it's, uh, it's four toothpicks or three toothpicks Oh my on a god, stick. are you serious? I was just about to say it's like four toothpicks. Yeah, well, that's what it looks like, so it makes sense. I guess that's true. I it's just not. have a phrase. Uh, that's not where we're going with this. If <laughs> I look at a fork, <laughs> what, I look, what I think it looks like is it looks like my hand. It looks like my, my, my hand from my elbow to, like, this is a, hold on, so I'm going to take a photo. Okay. No, I can kind of see where you're, oh, I'm so you like tuck right the thumb in see. and you've just got like a fork? Yeah, yeah. I can, I can like, see what you mean. Here's, it, here's a perfect example. If I feel, do the 30 minute I feel like you're about to Steve Jobs us and be like, we don't need a, we don't need forks. We have five of them in our hands. Well, I just, I what was thinking you? the other day about, uh, about how, uh, <laughs> if, if you, if you think about it, we invented the fork, like, I think around 1,000 uh, BC in Venice, right? And people have been using forks ever since. But we haven't really done much with them since that moment. <laughs> not a lot of innovation. In not, a lot of, not a lot of fork innovation. They've tried the spork. That's probably the last innovation I'd say in that, that space. But that, that didn't catch on. No. Some people like it. Some people don't. I not widely available. hate how fucking hard it is to send... <laughs> photo to this fucking discord so did you make this or are you showing it or is this like just displaying sort of podcast i was just gonna show you my stupid hand okay well i can uh, imagine not important at all just I'm, imagine if you will my hand uh no, okay. i want to no, see, it. see it no yeah you got to show it to us uh, yeah. we'll ignore how much it was built up because of shitty discord mm, all right well, we'll i won't take a break and then i'll okay browse no, no all the season why is this so hard? Camera. I want people to know how much I want other people to start hating Discord as much as I hate it. I hate Discord. I don't I really do it's easy hate with this. the app. You trying to send a photo through the app? He's probably the using his easy. phone. I'm using my phone. I'm using my phone. Yeah, but you, you, you use the phone app. Yeah, Download the app for that. Let me see if I can do it this way. This makes it easy. Copy photo. Can I just fucking this paste? Rules. Are you trying to use the Discord browser through the phone? Oh yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. So thumb tucked was, in. This was so worth it. Yeah, it's so this worth is it. What right? you wanted that fucking photo. That's a fork, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we already have forks, like <laughs> God or whoever g gave them to us, or God. natural selection <laughs> created forks, <God>. right? <laughs> created. We have we have a fork on each arm, uh, but we have a better version of a fork because we have a thumb, right? 
Mm-hmm. Like we have, like we have naturally yeah. improved upon the fork by having, by virtue of having a thumb. So it why don't forks? The fork game. Why don't forks have thumbs? If we could add a thumb to all forks, could we make forks better? I love it when I'm eating a load of steak and then the thumb of the fork hooks on the side of my lip. I mean, I don't yeah. know. I, does that do the other? Do the finger tines ever hook on you in any way? <laughs> oh! Oh, that's nice. And yeah, tucked in, that's nice. Eric found that some sort of a a wooden spaghetti fork spoon. That hand. A wooden forget I spaghetti <laughs> fork spoon is what I found. That's nice. That's what I'm talking about. But what would the f- the the I beauty don't... of the thumb is that you can sort of maneuver it very well. What does a fixed thumb get you with, on a fork? The same thing that other fixed tines get you. Right. So what? You, mm. Do you just want a <laughs> five tines? It fork? gives you. It gives you a little. But here's the thing. I don't know because I haven't like a tried it yet. I don't know. So like the food doesn't I, slip down. Yeah, I'm working on a mm-hmm. theory here. I'm just by, by looking at like if you if you boil a a, a a fork down to what it is, and you boil a hand down to what it is, they're almost <laughs> identical, but one is better because it has an extra digit uh, in a different place. And I just feel like I don't know that it's better. I just have a feeling that if I were to invent it and I were to start to use it, I would find I would go like, oh, this makes so much more sense. Huh. I feel like you're getting some of the benefits of a fork and a spoon at the same time without having an ugly spork, which is useless. And maybe it would prov- uh, maybe it would cradle yeah, your true. mouth a little. I think I think you're onto something potentially. I think there's definitely work to do in the lab for you. I don't want it to look like a hand, though. I don't want to have to imagine that I'm sucking food off of some fingers every time I'm using the product, <laughs> which is looking at that spaghetti hand thing that Eric posted is all I can think about. I don't want to suck off a thumb to get my fucking spaghetti. <laughs> See, I have terrible. no problem with that. I feel like a lot of the time as well, I, when, I, when I eat, I'm trying to get a bite of everything on the plate on the, on the same fork, mm. right? I, I don't, I'm not a freak like, was it Nick who just eats the ingredients and like works his way through the <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He'll yeah. do that. Yep. No. I, like, like if I'm eating like steak and potato and maybe some fruit or like some veg on the side, I want a little bit of all of it. And sometimes... If you've put the potato on and you've put the meat on, it's very hard to like get a tomato or something, you know, because you yeah. crush it. But the thumb would help pierce a little cherry tomato and it would it would be really good for getting all the different bites on the same bite. It's like a it's a flavor enhancer is what it is. It yeah. allows you it, to get that one be. extra component on your fork. Yeah, the, like the crushable component that fires off your plate if you squash it with meat. Now, before we get too far away, we just need to talk about the fact that Gavin in an isolated thing, I said that I do not want to suck off a thumb for spaghetti. And then Gavin said, well, that's what I like about it. You said something along the lines of supporting it and then ended your statement with Nick is a freak, which is great. <laughs> not in the same sentence. Uh, both, both things yeah, can be you true. Were, uh-huh. You were agreeing with Jeff's point of like having more prongs or whatever. But I said, I don't want to suck off a thumb. And you said, well, I do. That's what I like about <laughs> This process. I'm saying the wooden one, the wooden one doesn't bother me. It doesn't. I've got no problem with it. I don't like it. Does a knife or a spoon need a thumb? <laughs> That's interesting. A knife thumb. Like if a spoon had a thumb, you could potentially open a yogurt lid with it. I wonder why we don't have fork knives. I think you would cut your mouth. Where you have like, where you have like four knives in a row. Norks? No, just to help you cut more. Like, imagine if they were spaced a little bit further apart, and you wanted to cut your steak, you could cut four pieces at once. Do you think, Jeff, that your background as Wolverine makes you think about your hands as tools? <laughs> I, it in might. A different way? It absolutely might. That might be part of what part of this. But I bet that. But I have to draw on my experience, right? Did Wolverine ever eat office claws? Absolutely. He must have at some. Uh, absolutely. Point. Uh, before we get too far from the fork, I've been looking into what exactly it is and why it was created. Uh, this guy, uh, Kisuke Suba, Sub, uh, Subaki Moto. Nailed it. I think. Uh, won second place in a Japanese design contest where we, he won $5,000 creating this fork with a thumb. And when I put his stuff into Google Translate for what this is, a fork with the kindness and warmth of a thumb. You can enjoy your meal and you can support the food you put on it. 
in modern times, it is easy to forget that food is grown, transported, and prepared by humans in cities where it is difficult to see human involvement. This fork gently teaches us that food culture is supported by human hands through eating. If you can live your diet as a consumer, not just a consumer, you will be able to enjoy your daily life more deeply. Jeff, is that, do you think that's what you were getting at? Eric, I feel like that's what I said almost verbatim. <laughs> <laughs> there you have it. If you had two of those hand forks mm -hmm. and you sort of turn them thumb inwards, could you use the two thumbs as chopsticks? Mm. <laughs> the fucking Wolverine thing is so great. <laughs> <laughs> what is that photo of Wolverine at a cookout with like hot dogs and steak? <laughs> he, he turned his claws, his claws into shish kebabs, essentially. Imagine like the opening or ending of a Fast and Furious film, but Wolverine is there and the whole barbecue is on his hands. <laughs> he's got shrimp, he's got sausages, <laughs> he's got. I think steak. what that guy said is interesting of thinking about. Your fingers is having personalities. Oh, oh Eric, corn on the claws. Like corn on That's the claws. Awesome. <laughs> God. It's just it's a three it's pronged Wolverine cob holder. Branded. Yeah, it's like yeah, <laughs> corn on the cob holder. But um, viewing your your fingers as having personality. Do you think your thumb? Is the like warm and kind one of your hand? Do you think that's the vibe of a thumb? Absolutely. Because I don't, I don't feel. I feel like my thumb has a Napoleon complex. I feel like my thumb is kind of. It's always like starting on the other fingers. Yeah, it's sort of. I don't know. It's not fun. Easily irritable. It's not great. I think my little finger is probably a little mischievous. Likes to get into trouble. It's like the arrow it's, of the hand. It's the arrow of the hand. I think. Yeah, I think the warm, warm is somewhere between the other three fingers. What is Stop. that? It's the guy with a long thumb. It's oh. a long thumb. I just I was thinking about if if a longer thumb is warmer. Get out of thumb. it. That is such an Eric photo. Ugh. I'm just curious. If How many knuckles thumb. are in there? He's got regular normal knuckles. Yeah. <laughs> just stretch. Crazy. He just long thumb. R warm and inviting. I look at that and I think his dad was E.T. That was where my brain goes. I bet he's the best long hitchhiker in the world. Oh, <laughs> Well, that was kind of the blocks. whole. That was kind of the whole premise of even cowgirls get the blues, right? Uma Thurman I have, had huge I have no thumbs. Idea. I don't know what that is. I, yeah, I'm not familiar with that. It's a book and movie. Ah, never heard of it. Hold on. Did Tony Scott direct it? Was it stylized? <laughs> I don't know who directed it. Did they enhance in that film? You know what? Another overly stylized movie is Behind Enemy, Enemy Lines with Owen Wilson. I don't know the last time anyone here has watched Behind Enemy Lines, but I, I was looking at it. I was watching clips of it recently. There you go. There's a, a lot of Uma unnecessary Thurman's editing. Thumb in that movie. Oh, that oh. is. Yeah. Oh my god, that thumb is so big. Oh, I think I just have it. I have found the new weird thing that I just don't like. Yeah, there's her. Uh, there's her <laughs> hitchhiking. Big thumbs. <laughs> you're against. Movie. You're against thumbs. They. These aren't too warm long. and inviting. You don't want to suck this off while you eat from a fork or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just checking. <laughs> You can have a whole plate of spaghetti on that thumb. <laughs> I'm never going to stop sending images of the. I can't get enough of these. Oh, God. <laughs> that is a Dude, those are powerful this is, thumbs. Yeah, this is just, fucked up to send this to people. <laughs> Dude, that was a, is the just premise that they have big hands in this movie? Like, what is. No, she has a big. She just has big thumbs. Okay. I, re I read the book when I was like 19. I'll be honest, I can't fucking. I can't remember what it was about. She was just a she was a hitchhiker though. I remember that. Just a, her story. That makes sense. What a weird. Hmm. Yeah. So think about it. Fork the fork thumb. Uh, I would probably do it differently than that brilliant designer with the warm feelings. But uh, I might uh, if I can get into some spot welding or something, I might try to make up some prototypes. <laughs> I would uh, gladly buy your fork thumb product as well as the face logo crazy straw but uh we we got it this is a sad day guys this is uh the, there was a market crash that has occurred oh no not to be overly discussing mcdonald's but i placed an order i got some chicken nuggets and i went in when you know when you put in your order you have to click what sauces you want mm -hmm. did you do your hack oh no it's, that's a breakfast hack oh, okay. only this is a lunch order get my nuggets going into the sauces 
They fucking br- they brought back the BTS sauces. <gasps> they fucking brought them back. They brought them back. The market is flooded once again. They've devalued the stash. They've devalued oh. the stash. I have hundreds of BTS sauces still. Useless. You held market on collapse. too long. Oh. I held on. Well, there's never a peak in the market. <laughs> you can argue the market never existed. Maybe there's some value. Maybe you have like a first run BTS sauce. I like that's optimistic thinking. Maybe yeah. anything on it that says that it's, it's first like edition. the original run. There is a slight there is a slight difference between the two. Ooh. There's the the name of the flavor in Korean on mine, and it's just there's no Korean writing on the other ones. Oh. But the sauce is so there's a slight difference. Maybe you're right. I think that's a big distinction, actually. Do you think if I mail these into like PSA, could I get them graded? Yeah. I think they can grade my sauce. <laughs> yeah. I think they could. <laughs> yeah, this, what do they not grade? What would they send back? I mean, they grade is there a limit. They grade just about anything. Yeah, I think that really? you should you should send probably four or five, so that way they yeah. have they can compare and contrast. A range. And yeah. like, this is a nine, and then they look at this other one. They're like, never mind, that one's a nine two. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll look into doing that. I was gonna make my own, but I'd like to get it professionally graded. I don't trust my system. I had a uh, I was watching <laughs> Sloppy Joe's the other day, and I had a realization. Okay. Um, and I was gonna see what you guys thought about this. I think you could build an entire wardrobe of clothes, of shirts, out of purely out of spoofs of ACDC logos. <laughs> or possibly Metallica. You could do Metallica as well. There are so okay. many that, that those have to be the two most ripped off logos of all time. Well, you could have 20 <laughs> shirts in your closet that were all ACD shirts, ACDC shirts that weren't ACDC shirts. Do you have an example? Sure. Uh, A, B, C, D. <laughs> I re- oh, yeah, just the lightning bolt and the font style. Any word with an I in it. Oh, yeah, ADHD, A, B, C, D. Uh, I saw one. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I saw one the other day. Here's one. Here's a great one for Texas. Taco. <laughs> uh, oh. What about HSBC? <laughs> Here's a funny one that I had never seen before. This is an ACDC. But <laughs> TMNT. <laughs> <laughs> enjoy a cock that's kind of cool one uh yeah i don't know i just like i was just thinking about it and that there's so fucking many and i see them all the time that uh i wonder i wonder if anybody has ever keyed in and decided like that's going to be their thing i'm gonna have like metallica shirts that aren't metallica shirts they're helvetica shirts or <laughs> maybe you're <laughs> maybe you're really religious and they're jesus shirts <laughs> Should we sell a shirt that just says uh, f- face, but in like wingdings? <laughs> I like the idea. Here's I feel one. like we got to we gotta get the crazy straw going first. There's a Whoa. Don Zimmer one. Don yeah, Zimmer? Don Zimmer one. Sick. That D doesn't register at all as a <laughs> No. D. It looks like it says own Zimmer. <laughs> oh, dude. Speaking of Don Zimmer, uh, I saw one of these in the wild. What is that? Oh. It's a Zimmer. That's a Zimmer? Where'd you I've see that car? I've never seen a Zimmer car uh, it, it looked freakish, and I looked at the back of it. It said Zimmer on the back. I don't know if that was like a brand or like a make of car or whether the owner put that's Zimmer on it, but crazy. it just... crazy. But uh, yeah, I just Googled Zimmer, and it's like, that's what it was. I don't even know how to describe it. That would be like, imagine what a Italian gangster Batman villain would drive in Gotham in like a yeah. Tim Burton movie. Zimmer Golden Spirit. Dang. That's really never cool. heard of that. Should we, uh, should we make that the official vehicle of the podcast? <laughs> the Zimmer Mobile? Absolutely. How much do you think those cars cost? More than 10. Ooh. Uh, 200 grand. What if we put a picture of it on the obelisk? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to find out what the name of that town Look is. Look at the horns, dude. This what is... if we just put that on two raised posts and that will be our billboard? <laughs> Uh, are we going to talk about the idea for what the, what happens with like the loser? Cause it's not just about the winner or we, or do you want to say what that was for, like, the, the actual show? I don't know. I don't need, let's talk about the, the idea, idea for the loser. Cause I don't remember. You I really don't remember don't? it either. No, I will. The second do you I say it? it, we had an idea where the winner gets the billboard, but the loser isn't the person who's eliminated first. It's the person who loses in the finals, who comes in second place, oh, which is that's somehow, right. I don't know. Uh, funny to be like worse yeah. to get that close and lose. That's but fantastic. Jeff, Jeff bought those. <gasps> oh, 
red boots, the red meme boots. Oh. Yeah, big red boots. That's right. <laughs> He bought these and was wearing them around his house when he made us watch him <laughs> play was... a video game to get his I forgot, yeah, he was clomping around so in those flames. That was so good. <laughs> Um, That's right. So the loser of this competition, when we do it, the winner gets the billboard in the like in the in the epicenter of the face universe, uh, and, and then the loser who gets second place, not third through sixth or whatever, has to walk around the mall in those boots for an hour. <laughs> yeah, we I have love to, it. we have to be able to see him do it and everything. Go to the, or go it's... grocery shopping, or it has to yeah. be out in public in those dumb shoes. And by the way, oh. wear pads because they rubbed my shins off after about fifteen minutes. So I was bleeding. dude, your oh, no. shins were raw. That was crazy. Yeah, uh, I wanted to That's send really this funny. picture also, but it fucked up, and now it's good. <laughs> A little Hasbula. Uh huh. Boots. See? Yeah, those. That I love you. that as a loser punishment. Yeah, those. Really right? Fun. Isn't that great? That's I also great love idea. the idea of it's who comes in second, not who comes in last. Yeah, <laughs> those. Uh, those boots were so stupid. I had to get them, and I'm glad we figured out <laughs> something to do with them. And they delivered. They delivered on stupidness, not just in how they look. Oh, it's a oh, photo yeah. of you in the boots. <laughs> there I am. <laughs> That's how he was dressed with his little hat, and then he made us watch him play video games. And it really, I don't know what it is. You look like you're wearing plungers, like more so than other people in the boots. The way he was moving around was why. great. <laughs> They're not easy. What was to walk your mobility in. like in this? Like 75%. Really? Okay. You wouldn't want to do a marathon in them. You wouldn't want to do a marathon in them, but you could definitely walk around the mall and uh, eat at Sabaro. Nick says it looks like you stole those off a giant caterpillar. <laughs> what cat is there like a Mario character that has them? There, I'm seeing the same thing. Yeah, I like a Goomba it. or something. Yeah, like you fucking beat up a Goomba. And stole <laughs> well, I shoes. think they're designed. They're based off Astro Boy, right? Ah, ah. Does he have I rockets in them? There. Mega These Man. do not have rockets. Mm. I'd assume. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh. That uh, caterpillar with the, the flower. <laughs> what was that? Like a wiggler or something? His name is Wiggler. Yeah. And then, uh, you jump on his head and he goes all red. <laughs> <laughs> and his flower falls off. Something really <laughs> funny about beating up a wiggler and stealing its shoes. Hey, look, that's pissed Wiggler. <laughs> oh, pissed Wiggler is so mad. I mean, wouldn't you be mad if someone jumped on your head? That's what the loser's going to look like. That's what second place is. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Mm hmm. Ah, so I guess That's we'll do so that funny. when we get around to doing that. Uh, yeah, that sounds great. That thing, which we'll probably start to fuck with after RTX. I made a, I wasted my time recently. I made a dumb mistake. Was that? Fucked up. I, uh, I went to the doctor recently and like talked about anxiety thing. And so I'm like, I'm getting a prescription for it. And I had to, um, I didn't have to, but it was like, hey, do you want to talk to somebody about anxiety? And I was like, I've never done that professionally. So yeah, sure. Why not? I'll try it. And so I agreed to this appointment where I was going to talk about it. And then getting up to the appointment, I was feeling anxious because I was like, I don't really, I don't know how to necessarily talk about it. It's not something I've had a conversation with in that way. It's like a therapy thing? Sort of, yeah. Like a through the clinic, almost therapy type discussion. Yeah. I didn't really know. They were just like, hey, do you want to do this while we also give you medication for it? And I said, why not? Um, so I was looking into it and I found, I, I was like on the site and I'm on my phone and I found this other link and I'm like going from web page to web page and I finally found it and they had all these modules. It was like a 10 module process thing. I thought, oh, this is great. Like this is I assume what we'll go through on the call, like we'll start the first module and we'll talk about things. If I can do this now, I'll be prepared for going into that that discussion and that will make me feel better. So I, I'm reading through it and there's all these exercises in it of like. These are common trigger points or like things you could feel. How many of these do you feel writing that down? And it's like, think about how you feel in this scenario and list all of these things. And like some of them are like heavier emotional questions. And then at the end, there is this giant like sheet thing I had to print out almost like a school assignment of like spider web type feeling things of like cause and effect and all that shit. So I did all this work and I organized it. And then a few days pass. And it's like five minutes before I'm going to have my call. And I think, oh, I should I should pull up all that stuff. And also, I don't even remember what the name of that organization was. I should have that as well. So I can direct the conversation and be like, oh, yeah, I was on the site. I found these these things. 
uh, and I prepared for this. Uh, so I'm looking around and there's nothing immediately on the form for it at the top or anything. There's not like a logo or a company name. And so I'm scrolling through and I eventually found a block of text and I'm reading. I'm like, oh, this is great. This is what it is. And I'm reading the address of the thing. And it's like, oh, yeah, I remember those letters. That's exactly it. And I'm continuing to read the domain and I realized it ends in dot au. And I think that can't be correct. And so I click it and it takes me to an Australian website. I don't know how I got there. <laughs> I ended up on a random Australian anxiety support site and I did their entire first module for no reason. Didn't come up <laughs> once during the call. Had nothing to do with anything. Completely <laughs> irrelevant. I wasted like an hour doing a module for something that had nothing to do with what I was doing. Did you find it helpful in any way? Not necessarily <laughs> because it was a lot of the setup to what would then be helpful. It was a lot of the things to, to, How to did discuss you get on that. How did you find I don't that? know. I was on my phone and I was I clicked one thing and I couldn't like I just was going from site to site and that's where I ended up and it seemed to fit. And so I did it. But it's not, it was not relevant in any way. They so you were understandably to go into this thing and be like, yeah, I've studied all the material, and then they. They'd I be like, thought Wait, that I material? was gonna get a leg up and be like, oh, I'm already ready for module two. Let me. I thought I was gonna impress them. Be like, nah, no, I wrote everything down. I got all the answers for you. Instead, I was directed to AnxietyCanada.ca, which makes a lot more sense, but was not a site that I had explored previous. Was any of the examples? Did it give any like Australian hints looking back on it? No, no, I would have. If there was like a Tim Tam somewhere yeah, in like the document, boomerang Vegemite, phobia. if there was any mention of Vegemite, <laughs> are you concerned about spreading Vegemite, the public space? I would have got it. I would have been like, wait a second. There wasn't. When you went through your Canadian site, did you find any similarities between the material? I haven't uh, gone through. This is just like yesterday. Uh, okay. Well, I you're probably exhausted so from doing through. the other module. Yeah. Take a break. Yeah, no, I need to, <laughs> to build the strength back up to start a whole new plan. I just love the idea of you only being <laughs> being able to handle Australian anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> I got my hands. I got a real control. If we ever go to Australia, oh boy, I'm ready. I've studied for this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't don't think of it as wasting your time. Think of it as being super <laughs> fucking prepared for a very unlikely eventuality. Oh, that's really funny. I felt real dumb. <laughs> I did all that work. Oh, but, oh man. man. That's amazing. That's my process. <laughs> yeah. Don't feel bad, dude. I feel dumb all the time. Like, not, 22 oh, out of 24 yeah. hours a day, I feel stupid. There's 100, what, 64 episodes of dumb uh, here? This is, this, what, what, there's what, 163, this is? maybe? Yeah, I wonder if we've had an episode without any dumb in it. No. Oh, zero percent chance no. of of that happening. I saw a bunch of comment leavers discussing our episodes and like how accessible they are to a new audience and stuff, and they were actually referring to some episodes as like, "Yeah, this is a good uh, beginner episode. This one's like intermediate. This one's ex expert." Like <laughs> ranking them on, like how deep into the nothing lore they were. And I love that our podcast could be ranked like that. Oh, speaking of something uh, to love about our podcast, did you guys see, you know, we had that conversation about school songs. Did you guys see the the user that, uh, not user, did you guys see the community member that made the Pride of Face song? No. Oh. Is it Pride of Face song? Yeah, you should. I know we need to wrap up, but you guys should listen to this. Maybe, Nick, you can play it in the episode or something. We'll get permission from the kid. Okay. okay. Let's, let's listen All right, to I'm this. All right, listen to it now. Welcome Ooh. to the Zim Zone, we don't deal in pleasantries. We'll curse your socks with broken ankles while watching MVP. <laughs> we'll scrump a cosmic crisp, but eating pencils is just wrong. You're a regulation lister now that you have heard the song. It's so good. <laughs> there are 20,000 things to name, Bovril root canals and beans. Blindsiding and bat knobs and what extra media means. <laughs> and if you know the lyrics, leave a comment, sing along. Or just raise a laugh your grown tube and you can. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now that would be great to sing. 
Yeah, like everyone's grown tube going off at the same time. I love it. <laughs> oh. So there you go. That was, uh, at least it was posted by someone named Soup Taker on Reddit. Uh, I assume that's the person that made <laughs> that's it. That's so good. Uh, brilliant. The bl- brilliant lyrics. Uh, d- just a beautiful voice. Like, what a talented musician. Very current, too. Very the current. Blindside reference. Mm-hmm. Very current. And very, like, yeah, just like, just nailed it. Perfect execution. So I was blown away by that. I wanted to make sure you guys saw it, too. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Once again, the community proves to be way more talented than us. Oh, by miles. As yeah. always. I enjoyed the blind side because it is emerging in ways that I didn't even anticipate. Where when we recorded our two drafts, <laughs> Jeff was convinced the blind side was coming because there was two of them. Like we're doing drafts on a suspicious. Monday. I hadn't heard of one of the two drafts <laughs> we were gonna do until the text conversation. Like it all seemed fucking just sketchy as as all hell. And I was mad at myself the whole time for introducing this back into my life. But then we just did the drafts. I had fun in the last two drafts. I did too. They're great drafts. Did you feel old like did did it make you feel old in any way looking back at commercials from your childhood yes that, that was a weird side product for me like i remember being a little kid and hearing my mom describe of like for a nickel we got 15 popcorns and six bags of candy and just be like oh that feels old as shit that was a long time ago <laughs> and then seeing commercials from like the late 90s where KFC is selling 13 a uh, 13 piece bucket for $13 and just being like holy f- what like $13 noticing inflation in your lifetime yeah i'm seeing inflation and it's it's upsetting i've turned into that is my theater thing of the candy and like the popcorn that is my nickel story chicken has fucking gone up astronomically i always feel old when like people i grew up watching or listening to uh, like married to people younger than me <laughs> like like britney spears husband is was like born in 1994 that makes me feel old as shit i yeah i always well i just had this happen the other day actually i'm i'm pretty like once you get up to my advanced age you're acutely aware of how old you are at all times and you just see it constantly but i got surprised with it the other day when I was thinking about when I was in high school. I was telling a story to somebody, and I was thinking about when I was in high school and how I used to drive around. Like when, when I turned sixteen, I got my license. I was gone every second of the day that I could be, and I would just drive around in my car and listen to CDs from like seven p.m. until like eleven p.m. or whenever my parents made me come home. And I would just drive through neighborhoods and just by myself, just to be away. And and I was thinking about that, and I was like, how the fuck did I afford, afford all that gas? That was a I, I, used to, I blew through a lot of gas. Gas is like four bucks a gallon. And then I, and I was like, how much did I make back then? And I was I was working at, as a tool repair man, and I was making like four dollars and sixty five cents an hour. I think that was what uh, I think that was what minimum wage was. And I was like, damn, I was making like I was making like a gallon an hour. And then I and then I was like, oh yeah, gas was like seventy two cents when I was in high school. It was almost fucking free. <laughs> I could fill up my I could fill up my entire car for like eleven dollars when I was in high school, and that made me feel very old. That's crazy. I guess. Is it? Yeah. Well, no, I'm just thinking about that was the that was the I we, nobody has anything left to talk about. I'll just throw out a that's crazy moment. No, no, I was I was I this kept is, saying we should. Wrap I up. know. That's what I'm saying. It's it's happening in front of me. I always used what to think um, like those. I guess you didn't have little like Fred. What were those things? Freddo frogs or something? What the fuck? Freddo frogs? Yeah, I feel like that's familiar. No, they were always like 16p or something. And then watching the price of those go up. I didn't have a car. I didn't. Right. I didn't, yeah. The little chockies. Yeah. The little chocolate. Yeah. What you mean? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Freddo. They don't have that in America, but I've seen it in England. They, they, they usually have the price on the packet, which I think is that's that's because I didn't that's have useful. a car. That's my gas thing. <laughs> that's your gas. <laughs> the price of Freddo. The price up. of Freddo's. Yeah. Up I think they were like 15p when I was a kid. They were you, always I mean, the cheapest chocolate to get. What's crazy i was thinking about is like as far as feeling old goes i don't think there are people like if if someone was like 15 now they don't even really have commercials in the way that we experience them no not at all nobody watches tv now like it's it's, i'm essentially the cutoff for when you could do that i have a 17 year old daughter who doesn't know what tv is in the in the sense that i that i know what it is like cable means nothing to her satellite means nothing to her broad like over the air broadcast means nothing like tv to millie is youtube and netflix and hulu and whatever other streaming service and yeah yeah it's like the world is totally different yeah i don't even know what like what the comparable would be for 
Like, what would that? I just don't think it exists. Well, like a live event, maybe. Yeah. Like people still want to watch live yeah. sports, don't they? Otherwise, it's irrelevant. No, no, none of That's my true. friends, just me and Eric. <laughs> yeah, if if a sport isn't live, I'm not probably gonna watch. There's it. no way. So, yeah. so I, even I think if Nick is the same, even if you were at work when the game was on, and then you you've recorded it, you're coming home. It was like four hours ago. You don't know the result. Is it less exciting for you? You're it's... you're you're posing a scenario that I've never done, where it's recording sports. Oh. What if it was the, the World Cup final? I do that. I, re- I record Celtics games if I can't watch them live and so that I can, I can yeah. catch up and I try to avoid My the sport scores. is baseball. Yeah. They play 162 of them. <laughs> I, don't need to, I don't need to make sure I watch every one. There was one going on earlier today, like a Padres game, and I don't, I'll keep an eye on the score, but I, I don't need to watch 100% of the games during the season. It'll make me insane if I do that. What if there were just 40 games? I mean, I, I guess like an NFL also, season, like, yeah, what, like, yeah, I mean, like, but, but even then, even when I was a Chargers fan, there's 16 games or were, and, uh, if I missed one, it would be like, I'll keep an eye on the score and hopefully we won, but I'm not going to go back. I have endless access to every highlight that I would ever need. And I don't need to sit there and watch every play. It's, it's fun live, but I, I just can't, I can't do it. So if you, if the. If the U.S. was in the World mm-hmm. Cup final, right, mm-hmm. and you had to do a like a break shit stream, uh-huh. would you just watch it there and then on the stream, or would you? No, uh, I think I think I would. Put work, <laughs> I think I would put work first because I'm pretty dead. I'm pretty dedicated to this show. What What if it hadn't um, happened since 1966 pretty, uh, or whatever? <laughs> well, I mean, I I think I'm pretty dedicated to the show and the people in it, and so I think I would put your guys' feelings first and really just try to give in the and the fans. I would try to put the fans first <laughs> and um, really just give them the most of me that I could possibly give. Uh, so you're, you're a, you're a man of the, of the people. Oh, a hundred percent. I think if that's, if there's one thing you could say about me, (laughs) it's that. (laughs) I guess it was only the Euros. It wasn't the World Cup. I actually will sometimes when I'm watching live sports, which is pretty often, I'll just pause for like the first 10 minutes of the game or 15 minutes of the game just to let, to let, to let a buffer queue up so I can fast forward through commercials. That's fair. Because I'll be caught up with the game by halftime, you know? Right. Yeah. The thing that you want the experience of like live and in the moment, that's sort of the problem of even if I don't know the result, I feel like if something truly insane happened, I would have heard about it in some way. Well, that's the and thing. the fact I didn't means nothing did. That was always the thing with me like when I lived in England for watching the Euros or watching the World Cup is that you couldn't save it for later if you were at home because... Well, most of us lived in like terraces or semi-detached houses and you could hear people mm-hmm. screaming through the walls. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be like, oh, damn. I'm missing and something. also, is, like when you can fast forward, it's really tough for me to not be like, why don't I just see how this went? <laughs> like, why don't I just fast forward to the end? If we lost, do I really want to watch three hours of us losing? Oh, trust me, dude. Like <laughs> Celtics are down by 17 in the second quarter. I'm fast forwarding through most of it until, we st- until I start to see <laughs> yeah. that number change. <laughs> I don't need to watch. I don't need to watch us lose for no reason by 15 points for the fucking 10 billionth time in the last four years. So now that we've done two of these, are we are we in a prime blindside position, Eric? Are we? Are we those okay? Could, I mean, yeah, we could be at, the, okay. at this point. We are We're probably gonna likely miss next week, but we can try. So we'll see. Uh, but we do need to end this one in order for any of that to occur. Huh? So if why we, are we missing next week? If we keep this going, there's no blindsides. We have um, we have RTX next week. Is it on Thursday? I have a lot of prep to do on Thursday. <laughs> All right. You need to change the day, Eric. I'm, I'm available. He said he he said it, it. It was weirdly smug when he said that, and I don't like it. And I agree. But Eric did say earlier, Gavin, that um, if we wanted to do one next week, Wednesday might be a good day to do it. Yes, it is up to you guys. If we do want to do that, you just let me know, and we can uh, we can get it on the schedule, and we can aim for it. Okay. I don't like the way he said okay. Uh-uh. I don't like that either. Yeah. It's not just me, right? Gavin, you, 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 you could have gotten out of here unscathed, and now it's, I don't know what's happening. What's going on with you, Gavin? What's with that okay? Uh, it was like 60% saying okay and 40% looking at my calendar, and I just feel like overall it was fine. But maybe uh, some of the energy went into the, the eyes instead of the mouth. Uh. Some of the energy. Okay, all right, we need to wrap <laughs> this up. We're getting insane. <laughs> uh, like boba eyes? <laughs> like little hops? <laughs> little hops. <laughs> well, there you have it. You've listened to another episode of the 
Face podcast. We hope you liked it and uh, it had a good time. And if you did, maybe go out and celebrate. Get you some. Get you a a nice refreshing eyeball tea and suck down those dog <laughs> eyes and think about them and no, how loves. painful it was for them to be taken out of their eyes while they were alive just so that you could eat a refreshing drink. Because I hear <laughs> that if you remove eye. the eyes after the dog dies, it doesn't taste quite as sweet. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Hey guys, Major League fan Jack here with a look at next week's episode of Face. Panton wants to play guitar. That's just a bad fork. It's an RTX roundup. Bootleg gurplers are out in the wild. It's a microwave pizza avalanche. How was Key West? And once again, Andrew does not eat the pencil. All that and more on next week's episode of Face.